Hello and welcome to Hot Topics Wednesdays. You guessed it right. Today's Hot Topics Wednesdays episode deals with avatars. And I'm extremely excited because I have a very special guest. It's my friend and a colleague, Dr. Mrose, who is going to talk about benefits of using avatars in your virtual classes and training and your online and distance learning. Enjoy. I'd like to uh, talk to you today about uh, the use of avatars for teaching and learning and what is it that they can bring to the table of uh, teaching and learning. Um, let's first uh, agree on what it is that we're talking about. What is an avatar really? And uh, I would answer that by saying that it's basically a three-dimensional representation of a user online. And so when you're talking about the teaching and learning circumstances, basically an avatar is the three-dimensional persona that represents uh, the learner in the virtual learning environment. And so avatars are really important and they've uh, taken the first place in research because they're really the number one vector by which learners learn when they're immersed into a virtual learning environment. That's why they're so important. And so research has you know, pointed out at different areas that uh, uh, could be of real interest to try to understand how avatars could improve or, on the contrary, disrupt the learning process. So they looked at motivation, they looked at engagement, uh, identity issues too, and really the results right now are fairly small. There's not a lot out there. Uh, what research has already shown is that uh, there is indeed a personal meaning that's usually described to avatars. Uh, by the learners themselves. So they like customizing their avatars. It gives them a sense of identity that's really important. And that's something that needs to be uh, known about. The other important thing is that some research has shown that apparently there's no direct relationship between the use of an avatar for teaching and learning and the actual learning outcomes. And this is where I came up with my own research because I was like, okay, what what kind of learning outcomes are we really talking about? Because a lot of times, people measure learning outcomes in terms of what learners retain, what they recall, and I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that that's what learning is all about. Uh, and so my first assumption was to say, well, maybe learning is making sense of something. Maybe learning is having a sustainable meaning of a certain event or a certain fact or a certain topic and having it evolve uh, over time and through uh, social contacts with others. And so taking that assumption, uh, my uh, research work really focused on five students that were immersed in a virtual learning environment. And uh, very importantly, they were um, in charge of trying to solve a very complex problem. And what I was looking at more specifically was uh, the kind of critical thinking abilities that a group of learners could develop together by collaborating in a virtual learning environment. And I was also interested in looking at how they perceived the impact of that virtual learning environment on their learning process. So what I found was that actually, even though a lot of these students uh, had a fairly impressive background in terms of use of technology, you know, gamers and social networkers, that actually use avatars, they really did not anticipate that the use of an avatar could impact their learning at all. And, and that was surprising. Or just to say that basically they um, did not project any potential learning effect uh, through the use of the avatar. And what I found was that the number one important factor is that the learner actually identifies right away with his or her avatar. And that is important because what happens is that there's a sense of belonging, an identification process that's coming up. This little thing in the screen is me. And you get to wonder, if people were to hold a puppet in their hands, would it be the same? Would the identification process work the same? Probably not, you know, but after all, an avatar is just a puppet of yourself on the screen. So why is it that it's so easy to identify with that little persona on the screen when it would not be so easy to identify with a little puppet on your hand? An important point also was that the gender divisions that we uh, encounter more often than not in real life uh, seem to disappear in terms of identification. Some of those students were attributed uh, an avatar from an opposite gender than theirs, and they had no problem identifying. So 
you have the question of identity and gender that is also extremely relevant in the use of avatar. More importantly, even, was the uh, sense of anonymity that those learners gained by using an avatar. It was literally a screen between themselves and others that they were working with uh, within the group. And anonymity was actually felt more often than not as a very, very positive element into their learning because it allowed them to really endorse this new identity completely and fully. And because they were hidden behind that avatar and that other people didn't know who they were for real, what happened with that is that they reported having a very, very, um, they reported having a sense of anxiety and self-awareness that had lowered drastically. And that actually protecting them from the sort of self-awareness that sometimes people have when they're exposed into the imperfect comment that they might have over topic or subject. And so they felt that basically through that sort of mask that the avatar was providing them, it removed the self-awareness, it removed the feeling of embarrassment, and inversely, increased their self-confidence, and as a consequence, actually increased their eagerness to take risks. Uh, and that is really important because when you have people trying to work together to try to solve a complex problem, you want them to be creative. You want them to think outside the box. And taking risks uh, is clearly one way of thinking outside the box. Uh, another very important parameter of this anonymity is that uh, it, it led to actually not having any preconceived judgment or idea or opinion about the people that they were working with. And so what it led to, what they reported, was that they felt that they were in a prejudice-free and trust-based relationship with the other people they were working with, uh, which, as we know, is uh, a great basis for collaboration. Uh, and, and that lack of prejudice, the absence of prejudice and the, absence and, and the, and the reinforcement of trust really led to uh, social interactions that were much richer, uh, much more sustained in time, and that really... Uh, increase the exchange in terms of both quantity and quality of IDs in the group. And that was really amazing. The last point that was of great interest that those learners reported was actually the sense of suspension of disbelief that they felt through using these avatars. What are we talking about here? Suspension of disbelief, really. That is the ability to think that everything is possible. That's how you feel when you read a novel and you get immersed into it. Um, and so they felt that this suspension of disbelief was really increased. And why is that important for running? Well, it was really important in that case because it allowed them to fully connect with themselves individually, with others in the groups, with the task that they were trying to uh, handle and the problem that they were trying to solve. They were really immersed into this whole thing. It was not just the environment. It was the entire context of the problem they were trying to solve. And because it uh, opened that basically box of all possibilities, it let the IDs uh, be generated much more freely and bounced against each other. So they were much more uh, you know, creative in the way they were um, approaching the problem they were trying to solve. And what it showed was significant decrease in lower level abilities in terms of critical thinking. And on the contrary, uh, an increase of higher level critical thinking abilities. So clearly, working as a group with this sort of anonymity and suspension of disbelief that the avatar was providing them was a key component into uh, boosting their creativity and their uh, collaboration to try to solve that problem together. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned about many benefits of using avatars. However, just plugging them in into your online uh, training or teaching is not going to do the trick. There is a special secret to this, how to use avatars to make them effective. Stay tuned for the next episode next Wednesday, where Dr. Morose is going to share her secrets with us. And if you like this post, please click like and share it with the rest of your network. And if you're not on my list, make sure to sign up to www.wiredatheart.com. And have a wonderful day. Conquer that distance.